Hi guys, my name is Charlie and today I'm going to be covering how to trigger samples in your session using MIDI. So firstly, what does it mean to trigger samples? Triggering samples just refers to telling your DAW to automatically play audio files when it receives a signal telling it to do so. So this signal can come from audio or it can come from MIDI. So why might you want to use MIDI to trigger your audio samples? So firstly, it's uh, more accurate both in terms of phase alignment and also in terms of transient detection. So if you're triggering a snare sample from your snare audio, there's going to be a lot of other information in that snare audio file that isn't just the snare transient, which can then cause mistriggers and lots of other nonsense that you kind of want to avoid. And secondly, it also allows greater control over both the velocity of the uh, sample being triggered and over which samples are being played and when. So for example, if you want to have uh, one-shot samples being played during some parts and multi-layered samples playing, being played during another part, you can set that up quite easily. So the first thing we're going to do for me to demonstrate how to do this is create the tracks. I'm using Pro Tools, but this will be very similar depending on what door you're using. So we go New, and we create one new audio track. Uh, the session is completely empty. Those ones there are for the mic and the stream. So to input the MIDI, you just go File, Import, MIDI, or as it says there, you can just go Option, Command, and then I, and that will bring up the Import window. So for the sake of this tutorial, I already have a snare MIDI file that I'm going to be using here. So on our audio track, we're going to firstly name it Snare Trigger, and there is a reason for this, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, then we're going to load up Slate Trigger. There are other plugins that do this, but personally I just use Slate Trigger because I find it easiest to use. And then all we do is create a new MIDI track, put the MIDI on the MIDI track. So then we want to check which uh, MIDI note is actually being played on here. In this case, it's C1, which usually is the default, but if you're receiving MIDI files from elsewhere, you want to check this because otherwise it can just cause a headache. So C1. And then inside Trigger, we go to Settings, MIDI In, C1. If this is set to anything else, it's not going to work. So you've got to make sure this is set to the same note that that is set to. So on your MIDI track, you want to make sure that you have the output set to Snare Trigger, Channel 1. Um, the reason why we renamed that is because if you're doing this with, you know, 10 different MIDI tracks and instances of Trigger, you don't want to be like, oh, i got to send this to, you know, s Trigger track number 6 and be wondering which one that is. Just name the Trigger tracks and then it's a lot, a lot quicker and a lot easier. Then make sure you have a sample loaded, which we do. And then if we press play, we're now triggering a sample through Slate Trigger using MIDI. So the most common application for doing this is going to be in your mix session if you want to trigger certain samples alongside your drums in order to reinforce them. And occasionally you may want to trigger multiple samples. So one option that you have is to load up multiple samples inside of Trigger and then adjust them with the faders and, you know, do whatever you want to them in there. I prefer not to do that because that means that you have to find Trigger and go inside of it and you can't do any further processing on the individual snares. You just get one single signal containing all of your snares with the various fade levels. So what I prefer to do is set up multiple tracks, one for each different type of sample that I'm going to use. So I'll just demonstrate how to do that and then how to route this MIDI track to all of the instances of Trigger. So we create another Trigger track. We're going to call it Snare Trigger 2. So the way that we would do the routing, usually if you simply click on the output of the MIDI track, you have the option of Trigger 1 or Trigger 2, which are these two here. If you want to send this MIDI to both, you need to hold down Function Control on the Apple keyboard and then press the second one. So if you've already selected number one, you then come off it, hold down Function Control and select the second one. And you can tell if it's worked because you've got a dot next to each of these and you've got a little plus there. So if I only have that, we don't have the plus and we don't have the dot there. And if I don't hold down Function Control, then it doesn't select both. So you've got to come off it, Function Control, select the second one. Now, if I hit play, we should be getting two samples. Sounds a little weird because those samples don't really play very well together, but you get the idea. So the thing that's really great about being able to send one MIDI track into multiple instances of Trigger is that you can simply hide the MIDI track 
and keep your workflow really clean. And you'll notice even though the MIDI is gone, we still have our triggered audio coming from the MIDI that is hidden. Just make sure you don't make it inactive, just make sure it's hidden as opposed to hidden and inactive. So one last thing that we can do here to demonstrate is I've got a completed piece of drum MIDI that I wrote previously. Um, usually you'd use completed pieces of drum MIDI to um, trigger actual virtual instrument libraries in Contact or Superior Drummer or whatever it is that you may be using. Uh, what we can do, though, is we can use this MIDI to trigger multiple instances of Slate Trigger in your mixing session. So if you have programmed your drums using Get Good Drums, Superior Drummer, or whoever, you can still use this piece of MIDI to help you trigger additional samples in your mixing session. So all we've got here is we got Kick, Snare, and Tom. Just one Tom, because for now this is just demonstrational, but, you know, if you had three Toms, you'd do this three times. So we have... A kick sample on here, a snare sample there, and a tom sample there. So in this MIDI, I know, because I programmed it, that the snares are on D1, the kicks are on C1, and for the sake of this demo, we're going to say that the tom is A sharp 1, even though that's actually a hi-hat, just so that you can hear it. So when I press play, once we've got the routing correct, you're going to hear the snares, the kicks, and the tom there. Everything else is symbols or is, you know, otherwise irrelevant. So to make sure we've got this routing correct, we want to make sure that the kick is triggering from C1, which it is. The snare is triggering from D1, because that's where the snare is. And for the sake of this, the tom is A sharp 1. Then the last thing we do is we hold down function control. We go to kick, snare, tom. So as you can see, it's triggering all three of those. Now if we press play. Sounds a little bit goofy because of that tom, but again, you get the idea. We're triggering three different types of drums from three different MIDI notes within one piece of MIDI. And then again, we can just hide that. And we've still got all of our triggers being played correctly. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to check out the Brickwall Sounds website, Facebook, and Instagram, and we will see you soon.